In this review we're looking at a very complex model of a very complex machine. It is the Liebherr MK140 mobile construction crane and this model of it is by WSI. Out of the box we can see there are twist ties holding it in place and there's also quite a large manual which we'll look at shortly. After that it's the usual procedure of cutting the factory ceiling and lifting the lid. Now twist ties are usually the enemy of scale models but luckily these ones aren't too bad because they're so soft they pull out easily. After that we can lift out the model but this is a complex model so you have to be careful how you handle it. There are various pieces of packaging to remove from the model and that includes securing elastic bands and also protective paper and you just need to be careful how you go. Onto the manual and it's very comprehensive it's 24 pages and it starts by describing the real machine and then it goes on to the model and states that this is the first model to use aluminium on the jib and that's instead of die cast and it's done to reduce the weight so that the model will be stable. There is a long parts list which gives you an indication of the complexity of the model and then there are numerous stages to go through to build up the model. Only when it's fully assembled can you then properly retract it to display it in a transport mode. We need to get on and rig the model and we'll follow the instructions in the manual. So we'll start by pulling out the outriggers and that will give us some initial stability. There are spreader plates included but we won't use those whilst we're doing the assembly. We start by clipping a light bar onto the base of the tower and that gets followed by another light bar on the storage platform. And it looks like these parts are fitted separately now to avoid possible shipping damage. And that also includes fitting beacon lights on the cab. With that done we can begin by lifting up the tower and on the real machine this is done by a winch operating at the bottom. Once we've got the tower up we need to secure it in position and a large plastic pin is provided for that purpose. Once it's pressed in it gives a secure lock. The next step following the manual is to press in the counterweight and that will be needed to help the stability. Now we get on to the more complex operations and we raise the tower. It is telescopic with locks and we need to add on separate rails for the cab. The rails are telescopic on the real crane and fitting the top section on the model is tricky. It needs to clip in in two directions at the top and that's quite difficult. So to make it easier we filed off the bottom of the side connector just a little bit and that chamfer just makes it easier to fit in. It's also difficult to make the connection at the bottom of the top rail. And the best way to do that is to push in the locking clip of the top telescopic section of tower, lift it up just a little bit, and that gives you enough clearance to get the ladder in place and then lower it and interlock it. The manual says to keep an elastic band at the top to stop parts flapping about, and it would have been nicer if some small plastic clips had been provided. Now we can begin to carefully unfold the jib, and with a model like this the best advice is not to force anything. If you do, you'll probably break it. Once the first bit of unfolding is done, you can use a key on the erection winch and that begins to unfold the jib some more. The next thing is to insert a pin through two jib sections and a nice touch is that the key helps you line the holes up. Once that's done, we can go downstairs and start work on the luffing winch. This is pre-reeved and you need to carefully unwrap it and then using the key, unwind the winch and take the luffing gear to the top. It is best to keep the ropes tight if you can until you have bolted the luffing gear on at the top. And as you can see here you need to line up the guide frame. The manual advises adding the extra counterweight 
and these simply hang on. There's also a handrail that needs to be inserted and that presses into place. Next we need to reeve up the hoist rope and as you can see here it's not all on the drum and that's because it's difficult to fit on the drum and we'll see more of that later. Here the hoist rope has been run over the top of the tower and fitting the trolley is fairly straightforward, it is plastic so you can ease it into position on the jib. The tying off point for the hoist rope uses a part which is called by the manual the roller cage and here we're just showing how it fits onto the end of the luffing jib tip and it's the same on the other fixing points. Working slightly differently from the manual we'll disconnect the shackle from the single line hook. We can then tie the hoist rope onto the shackle and then we fix the shackle to the roller cage. So that's how you complete the tie off point for use in trolley mode. But in this mode you don't actually fit it to the luffing jib end that we have here. With that we can complete the assembly and put the single line hook in its holder. Starting underneath the model and it's nice to say it is highly detailed and that includes all of the steering, suspension and transmission components. Various tanks are modelled and the tread pattern on the tyres looks good. The carrier cab is very nicely modelled. It's got the protection guard from cables on top and all of the small detailing is very convincing. That includes a number plate and nicely highlighted lights and other details. The inside of the cab is also very detailed. A particular highlight is the tiny warning graphics and there are many of them on the model. The wheels are also different on driven and non-driven axles. The outrigger beams are very detailed with more tiny graphics and smooth pistons and there are intricate graphics on the outrigger beams. Detail around the carrier engine area is also very high with excellent meshwork and different components. There's plenty of diamond plating on the carrier deck and at the back the storage platform also has very nice diamond plating and the light bar is very detailed with its tiny components. There's a spooling drum for control cables which would have been nice with some rope on. Looking inside the crane all of the winches are provided and that includes the one for raising the tower. It's not reeved up but a skilled collector might be able to do it because the pulleys are also provided at the bottom of the tower. One small negative is that the securing bolt is slightly off colour but on the other hand the telescopic tower is very detailed with its pipework. The driver's cab is a nice looking part, there's an air conditioner at the bottom and there are tinted windows and the interior detail looks good too. All the winches are modelled including the trolley winch and that has got rope on it. So again a skilled collector might be able to do something with that. The main hook is a nice metal part. This is a very complex model and all of the interconnecting parts are modelled very well. And fortunately the assembly ropes are reeved in the factory. The lattice work is fully triangulated and looks good. And an unexpected small detail is that the work lights are also modelled. Starting underneath and all of the axles have independent sprung suspension and there's also independent steering on each axle and this was quite stiff on the review model. The model is very large with its scaled 65 meter jib but it's reasonably stable. One feature that works particularly well is the rotation. It was super smooth and precise on the review model and is one of the best we have tested. A weight is included to provide tension on the hook and it's advisable to use it if you're using the hook winch. The trolley position can be moved by hand so you can place it where you want on the jib. Another nice touch is the access ladders which get you onto the carrier deck, assuming you're 1 to 50 scale of course. Also working is the cab elevator and you can rotate that winch by using a finger and you just might need to give the cab a bit of a hand on its way down. 
The real crane offers a mixture of trolley or luffing modes, and the model offers it also. So to convert it to the full luffing jib, we position the trolley where it's shown, and then we raise the hook and use a pin to secure it to the trolley. And that means the main hook is now out of use. At the end of the jib, there's already one red section, and we can add a second piece on. You have to offer it up carefully and then rotate it in position, and then use a screw to make the final connection. Once we've done that, we can relocate the roller cage to the end of the jib, and then we can undo the tying off shackle and attach it onto the single line hook. Now we've got the crane converted, we can hang on the Vario jib banner. And after that, we use the luffing winch to raise the jib, and we end up with a model that's nearly two meters tall. One improvement we can make to the model is to change the hoist rope. The supplied one barely fits on the drum, and it's a bit too stiff so it doesn't sit well, and naturally wants to tangle itself up and go down the edge of the drum. So if you ever really want to use the hoist winch, you'd be much better off changing the rope to something much softer, which fits on the drum better and stays on and doesn't try to jump off at the earliest opportunity. This is a very complex model with tight tolerances, so if the jib profile is not quite to your liking, you might be able to adjust it. And one thing you can try and do is to put a spacer into the top sliding mechanism. So here, a small piece of plastic has been cut, and then you can insert it into the sliding mechanism, and the tension in the system keeps it in place. On the review model, this small spacer was enough to improve the jib profile. But in reality, it's only a matter of personal preference to try and do this. With the model fully assembled, we now reverse it to try and collapse it down to a transport mode. And this becomes a fairly complex operation. And the hard part is trying to maintain all of the parts in the right place and keep all of the ropes tight. So the good news is it's possible to do this. Although someone without any experience of crane models might find it somewhat difficult. With the crane all closed up, we can now put some parts on the storage platform. And once we've done that, we can take it onto the road. Rolling the model along in a straight line is very good and it works well. And if we test the suspension, there's some nice springiness there. With the steering axle set, the crane is nicely manoeuvrable. Models of this kind of machine are some of the most complex models you can find in 1 to 50 scale. And WSI has produced a model with great detailing and has innovated with the use of an aluminium jib to improve performance. It's not a model for a beginner, but if you want a great piece of model engineering, then this one is excellent.